Will LeBlanc here from Merrimack Athletics here with Scott Bork, head coach of the Merrimack men's hockey coach and coach a little bit different this time of year with, uh, you know, coronavirus and the quarantine and all that. Um, with everything going on the past few months, how's the team been staying in touch? You know, it's been interesting, obviously, with doing a lot of things they had to do with school, just in the, you know, the online schooling and the Zoom meetings and different things like that. But I feel it's, you know, the one thing we have to remember is that everybody else is going through the same thing. So it's everybody's challenge. And some people are going to be really good at staying connected and some teams are going to be at just average at it. Uh, we've tried to work really hard to have our team in kind of small group settings. Um, also have, a, we have a meeting uh, once a week on, we you know, usually try to have a guest speaker of some sort, but just trying to update our guys uh, on where things are at, uh, what we're trying to do as a team, continue to move forward towards, towards next season. Uh, and then obviously with the way the world has been uh, and the things that have happened, you know, we've tried to also be uh, as involved as we can be from our living rooms, but in getting to know uh, how we can make a difference and how we can be active supporters of, of the very important times we're in now. So I think um, this so far it's gone really well. Um, I've been really pleased with the way our guys have been making, cutting out the time to be on those Zooms and, and to participate in those Zooms. And, you know, hopefully we'll continue to do that until we're finally able to get together in person. And looking at the hockey for you, Coach, this will be your third season coming up, and uh, you were able to improve your number of wins this past year. And now we look at this freshman class, which will look to build even more. Seven newcomers come to the group, as we announced last week on social media, and we'll go one by one, starting off with uh, one of the few local guys that you have on the list, uh, Connor Lovett out of Lawrence Academy. Well, Connor's going to be a true freshman, and that's one of the unique things about this freshman class. We do have three true freshmen. Uh, but Connor is uh, out of Lawrence, a very hard player. I think uh, Connor's game really translates to college very, very well. He's hard. Uh, he skates well. He competes very hard at the puck. Uh, he's a one-on-one -on -one battle guy. Uh, he, you know, has played mostly center, can play both. Uh, but we're really excited about just the, his will that he's going to bring to our lineup. Uh, he is a very uh, high-end competitor, and I think that compete is something that uh, we need. And with his skill level, I expect that he'll be able to make an impact in, in both those areas. So we're excited. And I think he's going to do well as a true freshman. If, he, if we weren't comfortable with that, we wouldn't have asked him to do it. Um, but he's, he's excited to be here. He's a good student. And I think he's ready to go to college. And I think he'll, I think he'll have a strong start for us just because his, his B game is so good, and that being his compete. And our second prospect that we announced, um, another guy, another prep school player, but this time from Canada, St. Andrews College, talking about Mark Hillier. What do you see in his game? Mark's an interesting prospect. He's very, very skilled. He has a high hockey IQ. Uh, he really makes the players around him better. Uh, I actually went to a game uh, thinking that I was going to be telling him that we need you to play another year. Um, and then in the first four goals, he had four points. And I uh, went down and gave him a much different scenario. <laughs> uh, but he, you know, he's long. He's growing into his body. Um, but his hockey IQ will allow us him to make, you know, really be in the right spots on the rank and to see the people who are also in the right spots. Uh, you know, mostly a playmaker. Uh, he really likes to move the puck, probably to a fault. Uh, one of those guys you love to play with because you know if you go to the right area, he'll find it for you. Uh, I've known Mark for a long, long time. He was recruiting before he got to Merrimack. Uh, so we have obviously high expectations for him as well. And Mark, a player that could be taken in the upcoming 2020 NHL entry draft along with our next player, Alex Jeffries, another local player, uh, played prep school at the Gunnery. Uh, you know, another local player that is jumping in right at 18. Coach, what do you see about Alex? Well, it's interesting. You talked the first few guys we mentioned are all true freshmen, which is uh, really not something that happens in college hockey much anymore. Uh, but Alex is a gifted scorer. He can really finish. He can, he's got a pro shot right now. Um, when he gets inside the dots, he's, he scores most of the time. He hits the net on, on almost every shot, which is why he's such a, he's such a high scorer. Um, but he's also, he's also a guy who can move the puck. I think what I like about Alex's game is it's not one-dimensional. Um, yes, he's a great finisher, but he also moves the puck, finds other people's, looks for the better option. He's a good skater. All three of these players we're talking about right now, we think can be, make immediate impacts on our team. But all three of these players are going to have to get stronger moving forward just because they're coming so early. Uh, Alex is most likely going to be a, a draft pick this year. He had a really good season this year with, with the Gunnery School and Rock, Rock uh, City Selects. So we have high, high expectations for him. Uh, he's excited about Merrimack, and we're excited about him. 
And the next player we're looking at, um, you know, you look at this current roster, there's a lot of flavor from the British Columbia Hockey League. And uh, out of the Brooks Bandits, talking about uh, Jacob Lee, what do you see out of his game? It's funny, the next couple of players we're going to talk about uh, really relate to the first three players we talked about. Jake Lee, a captain, uh, a leader. Uh, he gets unbelievable marks from his coaches as a character and as a locker room person. He really does own the room, as the coach told us that we recruited him from this year. Um, very thorough game. He's good on both sides of the puck. He's very mature. Uh, that will allow him to probably impact our team immediately because you can trust him immediately without the puck. Uh, most times for freshmen, that's the hardest thing to get their game on is how they play without the puck. Uh, Jake is a strong without the puck game. Uh, he's important to us because he's older, uh, more mature, been through the ropes a little bit. And hopefully that will help our younger players move forward as well. Uh, the next player um, was at a little bit later on in the recruiting process, but uh, this coming season, you won't see way too many new faces on defense. A lot of the same players, but this year, Kevin Sadovsky out of Utica, uh, the junior comments coming in. Um, how do you think he can fit into the squad? Well, Kevin, you know, Kevin's challenge is going to be we return pretty eight pretty good defensemen that we're really excited about. Um, Kevin is a very good skater, long body. I think he's just tipping the iceberg really of his game. You know, even though he's a 20 year old freshman, uh, he hasn't uh, been in a place where his game has been challenged to push it as much as it will be next year. Uh, I think he has a really nice upside. Uh, I'm excited about working with him because he skates so well, moves the puck, makes good first decisions. Uh, he's really a guy who really wanted to come to Merrimack, and that matters to me. You know, he wanted to make it his place. And uh, we were initially not going to bring in another defenseman, uh, but Kevin was someone who wanted to be here and, and uh, was up to the challenge. And he knows what it is, um, and he feels he's ready for it. And we want we really, again, another player we recruited a lot for his maturity and, and what he's been through to get here. Uh, to bring our young team along. And earlier we talked about the local flair with some of the new prospects, but there were three Scandinavian freshmen last year on the team with Yuri Hudema, as well as uh, Hugo Esselin and Philip Forsmark. But this year, Philip Carlson Tagstrom, another Swedish player who played in Sioux Falls for a few games last year, seems like another player with some elite offensive capabilities. How do you think he's going to fit in early on? I think for Philip, it's going to be a, a grind to start just because he missed all of last season with an injury. Um, he's a very talented, very cerebral player. Uh, he also was a captain in, when he was in Sweden. Uh, they expected big things from him in Sioux Falls, but unfortunately the injury set him back. Uh, he made the decision, which we actually fully supported, and we're hoping he would make the decision to go home and get it taken care of uh, so he wouldn't have to do it this summer. And he did that. Um, he's a, a guy that I, we will count on for leadership. He's a guy we'll probably count on at the face-off dot. Um, and I think he's someone that he's a little bit more explosive than uh, we've probably seen recently, uh, just with his offensive game. Uh, but I'm excited about coaching him because I think his upside's enormous. I think it's going to be a tough start because he hasn't played in a year. So it will be a grind. Our expectations for him at the beginning of the season won't be as high as maybe with the other guys, just because he's got to get into the groove. He's, he's played five games on a North American rank, never mind the Lawler. And that's an adjustment but uh, I'm confident he'll make a good one. And the final freshman in the class, the only goaltender who put up great numbers last year in the BCHL, uh, Zachary Borgiel. Uh, what do you like about his game in between the pipes? I'll tell you, the first thing you notice about Zach when he walks into the room, he has a really good presence. Um, you know, the first time I met him, I said, that's the first thing I said to Dan and Josh is I love his presence. And that was not in the ice. That was in the, in the coach's room. And, um, uh, he really has a lot of confidence. He moves very well. He's a big, big goalie. I think that what he does, I think he feels really good about his game. His confidence level has allowed him to get through some tough times. He had a great start last season. A lot of schools dealing with him. Uh, had a little bit of a slump in the middle of the year uh, and then got himself out of it uh, all on his own, really. And his coach is an old friend of mine who just raved about the way he came out of that and the way he competed his way out of the slump so it didn't last very long. Uh, we were fortunate that our assistant coaches stayed on him during that time. Um, and then when it came around to make the commitment, he did to us. And, you know, we feel really good about his game. I think he's going to add to the depth of the position. I think he's going to compete at the top of the position. So that's all seven players coming in, a good mix. Uh, coach, if you had to just keep to a few words, you know, how would you describe this class as a whole coming in this fall? I think this class has a lot of presence in it. You know, I think – a lot of offensive success uh, before they came here. 
which makes you feel good about your game. Even Kevin Sadowski, the defenseman, had 40 points last year. Um, all five of the forwards were lead offensive players on their teams. That's important because the most important skill is confidence. Um, and then, as I already spoke about Zach Borgiel, he, he reeks of confidence. So I think presence for this group is going to be really positive. I think each one of them expects to make an impact, and that's the first thing you got to do to make an impact. So we're excited about them. I think it will be a difference-making class. And last question, Coach, just talking about next year as a whole, it will be a little bit different. But, you know, you've gotten better as you've progressed over the years. Um, how do you see this team improving? And what's the excitement level like for this roster coming into the season? Well, to start, I think we'll uh, do a much better job uh, behind our own red line. You know, last year with, with 16 new players, all three of the goalies knew, five of the defensemen knew. You know, we had a little bit some horror shows in the first half of the year uh, defensively. I thought we really cleaned that up moving forward in the second half of the season. You just saw that in the way our, our team played um, and some of the wins that we had at the end. Um, so I'm really excited about our team. That's without the freshmen. Um, I think that each guy returning made an impact on a real improvement in our season in the second half last year. I really felt we were a playoff team down the stretch. Um, and now having you know these seven freshmen come in, a lot of offensive confidence, I'm, I'm really excited about what this team can do. I think um, the most important thing for us right now is to handle the distraction of, and I hate to say it like that, I don't want to minimize this by using the word distraction, um, but the distraction of what's different. You know, we're in, a, we're in a difficult time to stay focused on getting better. And um, at the same time, there's never been a more important time to be focused on getting better. So we're trying to make sure we keep that focus. And if we can do that, I really, I, I'm excited about this team. I think this team can make some real noise. Just under four months till we get to see this team on the ice for puck drop to begin the 2020-21 season. Coach, thanks so much for the time. Thanks, Will. I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you soon in person.